welcome to my video tutorial how to edit an aurora shot. I recently wrote a blog about how to photograph the aurora and the lovely Katie was curious to know how to process the image once you had captured it. So let me show you. Uh, this image was captured in Norway um, right up the top in a little place called L Lofoden. Um, it was luckily on our second night staying there, we looked out the window and could see um, the aurora um, slowly making its way over the mountains. Um, so we raced out with our camera gear down to the lake or the fjord um, and started snapping away. Um, it was an awesome experience and I hope that I get to see it again one day because it is quite magical. Um, so to begin with, I'm going to show you what this photo looked like straight out of camera. Now, I do want to warn you that because I shoot in RAW, um, the files are quite dull and lifeless when you capture them. Um, what you see on your LCD screen, the little screen on the back of your camera, is a JPEG file. So it looks nice and colourful um, at the time of capturing the image, but what your camera actually captures um, if you're shooting in RAW is just the bare bones of the image. It captures all the detail and you need to process your images to bring out all the beautiful colours. Um, a lot of professionals shoot in RAW just so that they are capturing every single detail that they can, um, but you do have to process your images to bring out the beautiful colours. Um, RAW is a lot better than shooting in JPEG be for that reason. Um, JPEG file is a compressed file, so you're losing a lot of detail if you're just shooting in JPEG. But if you don't intend to process your photos, then that's fine. But I would recommend shooting in RAW. All right, so this was our image straight out of the camera, which you can see is quite a bit different. You can see the aurora coming through there. And of course, when I was viewing it on the back of my camera screen, it was like a lot brighter and a lot prettier than um, the raw file. So um, I want to bring it back to what I saw on the back of the camera that night. Um, and because I was shooting in pitch darkness, um, you can see that my camera was really crooked on the tripod. And <laughs> the first thing I want to do is straighten that up. So I'm in Lightroom in the develop module. And if you just click on the little square up here, that will bring up um, your cropping box. And you can see I've got a little curved arrow as I move it down towards the corner of the image. So I'm just gonna drag that towards the left. Um, and you can see how crooked I was, which is quite funny, um, but it's pretty hard to see what you're shooting um, in pitch darkness. Um, and you do have to do with quite a few test shots to make sure you are capturing what you wanna capture. All right, so now that we've straightened it up, um, the first thing I want to do is just bring up the exposure a touch because it's a little bit underexposed. Um, I'm going to bring up the vibrance. That is one of the sliders I usually start with just to see what I'm working with and to make sure that there is color there that I can pull out, which there is, you can see. And you can see it before anyway, like the beautiful aurora shining down. Um, and the gorgeous mount, snow covered mountains over there which was just the most stunning place I've ever seen and I highly recommend everyone go to Lofoden at least once in their life. Um, now with um, Aurora photos it's very similar to processing a Milky Way shot so I focus a lot on the whites and the blacks so I'm just going to bring the white slider up quite a bit and I'm just going to take the blacks down a touch as well. Now you can see it's lightened the image up a lot, which is what we want, um, but has made it quite yellow. Um, so to counteract that, I'm just going to bring the temperature down quite a bit to about 3400. So you can see there, like that's counteracted the yellow and it's brought it back to a really nice um, blue sky color, which is what with the um, green and purple aurora shining through there. Um, the next thing I wanna do is add some contrast, which is um, really good for pulling out a lot of the, the detail in the sky. So it's gonna, just gonna bring out a lot more of the stars in the sky and it brings out a lot more detail in the mountains as well. And just going to increase the clarity a tiny bit as well. Um, 
Now you can see the mountains are still a little bit dark and they're still got a bit of a yellow tinge. So I'm going to use the adjustment brush. So up here, just click on the adjustment brush and I'm going to paint over the mountains here just to brighten them up a bit. So um, you can increase or decrease the size of your adjustment brush by using your left and right bracket key. And to see where we're painting, um, just turn, just hit the O key on your keyboard and that will turn on like a red mask so you can see where you're painting there. I've just got my um, feather set to around 50 so it's not like a really harsh line we're drawing. It's quite nicely feathered and the flow is set to about 64. I probably should increase that but that's what it's set at at the moment so we'll go with that for now. Alright, so just make sure everything is red that you want to work on. And that's looking okay. So to turn the mask off again, just hit the O key again. And I'm going to just bring up the exposure a touch. And then just turn the temperature down a little bit um, on the mountains as well. Um, I'm just going to do a little bit more work around the top of these mountains here that still look a bit dark and yellow. So if there's any areas you've missed, just go over them again. And then increase the brush and get in there a little bit too. Of course, where you're painting over is um, is going to go over that section again and make it twice as bright as the first time we went over it. And if you if there's areas that you've gone outside of outside the lines, if you're not very good at coloring in, um, just hit the erase tool over here and just go over those um, sections that you you want to erase. Alright, so that was before we used the adjustment brush and that was after. So we've quite we've brightened up those mountains quite a bit. And just hit done once you finish there. Um, I just want to sharpen um, the image a little bit as well and just a tiny bit of noise reduction. And I always tick these two boxes down here. Um, so you can see that makes quite a difference. Um, that just corrects um, your lens. Um, because I was using a wide angle lens, it had a bit of a curvature to the image there. That's fixed that up for me. And I don't really like how yellow this mountain is. So I'm gonna do another adjustment brush just over that section there. And just try and get rid of that yellow just by turning down the temperature to the blue side. And you can see um, I've made a bit of a mess there. I'm not very good at staying inside the lines when I'm coloring, but it's easy to fix just with the erase brush, eraser tool. And done. And that's about it. So that is how I process um, my Aurora shots. I'd probably go into Photoshop and just um, spot remove that line there. Um, but that is basically it. I'm pretty happy with how that turned out. Um, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and thanks for watching. And if you wanna see more of my editing videos, be sure to check out my Process Like a Boss e-course in the link below.